Okay, I'm back out again at the Southern Bay today. Uh, quick run today, I've only got a limited time frame. So I've got the last couple hours of run out, I think it's like an eight o'clock low. It's a reasonable run out, so I've got a fair bit of run. And then a smaller run in, I'll have a couple, uh, probably an hour or so of the run in before I have to head off, got a bit on today. So yeah, bottom of the bay, I'm gonna have a look around for Squire, uh, probably uh, try and get some floodies as well. And I think there's been quite a few Taylor and small mackerel around, so I'll have a bit of a look around for them as well. So. I got a new combo. I've got a really light ultralight bait cast combo and have a go at that for snapper. So I'm just gonna quickly zoom around and try and find some snapper straight away. Uh, I'm gonna zoom around, hit a couple of spots and see if I can find any concentrations of snapper and then throw that ultralight bait cast in there and give it a go. All right, let's, um, let's hit it. It's a bit gloomy today, 50% chance of rain. So I've got the rain jacket on board. Hopefully we don't get that rain and um, it's not too bad. All right, go uh, see if we can catch some fish. Done a bit of sounding around. I found some fish. I think there might be squire. They're a bit deeper water. Yeah, they look like squire to me. Uh, a bit deeper water. So I haven't got the BFS rod out yet. Got the 100 conquests. But uh, see how he goes. A lot, it seems like a lot of fish there. I think we could be on to a couple here. Got a 3 8 ounce jig head, uh, seven meters of water, bit of current. All right, I'm gonna have one cast with the ultra light. All right, bunch of fish here. So many fish there. Here we go. Yes. Woohoo! Smoking. <laughs> this is pretty cool. Got the BFS out, we've hooked up. I think we've got a pretty good snapper here, I'd say. I'm going for like a 50 plus centimetre snappers. Oh no, we got a Jew. <laughs> Small Jew. Straight up. <laughs> uh, that's cool. Hey, little fella, <laughs> but a heap of fun on this gear. Tell you what, that was cool. All right, so I'll get that little Kalido star out. Come on, buddy. All right. All right, so not a big Jew, but um. First fish is a Jew. I think the snapper's in there. The way they're sort of sitting off the bottom, I put money on the snapper in there as well. So hopefully I get some snapper on this ultralight tackle. I was hoping for a uh, snapper. We got a Jew. That's pretty cool though. All right, pop him back in. All right, it's a good start for the morning. See you later, buddy. All right, let's see if we can do that again. So I'll run you through this BFS. You probably don't know what the hell that means, but it's a bait finesse special. So it's an ultra light reel. It's a, it's a Calcutta Conquest. It's the 100 size frame, but they put an ultra light spool in it. So it's designed to cast really light lures. Um, I've got some P1 Sunline on there and I'm running a 10 pound Blackstream leader. And like I said, I've got that quarter ounce there, Kalido Star, three and a half inch Biwa Grub. And that got fully eaten on the on the hop. Now I'm really hoping for some squire here, some snappers. 
And the rod is a Dobbins Ultra Finesse, okay? It's a Sierra, six foot five, pretty short. Short for me, definitely short for me. And it's a two to eight pounds, so ultra light. Most people uh, know they love my bait cast gear and um, yeah, this is this is as light as it gets with bait cast gear. So a bit of fun when you know there's no sharks around. Your pressure on your bearing and then you've got your magnetic cast control on the other side. So it's got your two controls there. Comes with a pretty small little handle. Um, I'm probably gonna upgrade that to a slightly longer handle. But um, for this first trip out, we'll stick with that shorter handle. This is the XG model, so it's quite high gear ratio. Ooh, there's a bunch of fish there now on the sounder. All out probably like 20 some meters. So really should hook up here, I would hope. Yep, there we go. Yeah. This is a bit more erratic. Jeez, I felt that bite through this rod so fiercely. Yeah, this is definitely a bit more squire-like, I think. Yeah, head shaking and banging around there. That's the right one. Probably not the right size, but that's the right species. That's what we want. Just pull him in. Oh, he's a nice little squire. Snappers on the BFS. All right, the sound is loaded with fish at the moment. This fish is well and truly legal. I'll put him on the measure and just see what he goes. Might keep a couple for a feed. All right, that fish is 42 centimeters. All right, pop him in the live well. Nice 42 centimeter, centimeter. 42 centimeter snappers. All right, fish all over the sounder. Let's go again. I reckon we've got a 50 in us today. Definitely got a 50 in us. It's gonna be a ton of fun. 42 is a great battle on this little ultralight outfit. So I think a, um, I think a 50 would be a handful. <laughs> Plenty of fish down there. I've cast quite quite far forward. The scan's obviously at the back here and I'm going up. Oh, the drop. Yes. Didn't even get down there. Woo, listen to that drag. <laughs> Woo. This could be that 50 I'll be talking about. <laughs> oh, this is cool. Such a cool little light rod. A lot of fish down there. It's really a good time of year. The fish really move throughout the bay this time of year. We get this run of, you know, smaller fish, not huge, but good sized fish. Another good sized fish. We'll take that. Swing him in. Another nice fish. All right, that's a bit bigger. This will probably like be like 45 centimeters, I reckon. All right, Kalido Star, killing it. Quarter ounce Daiwa Jighead. The Daiwa Jighead holds these plastics on the best. Stretchy material plastic, seven in a packet. Excellent value for money, lasts forever. Can't talk these lures up highly enough for snappers. They work really, really well. I'm going 45, I'll put in the measure and see what he goes. Uh, that's 44, close, 44 centimeters. Another good size fish for the well. Okay, turn that off. Yeah. Plenty of water in there. This is, we're going for three and three casts, I think here. Again, I've gone up a bit. I've got fish directly to my side here, but I think they're really in this whole, this whole area here, quite thick. 
they're underneath the boat they're sort of everywhere at the moment to be honest Let's see if we make it to the bottom this time I think we made it to the bottom then I think Current's brought this lure in quite close to the boat. There's definitely fish under the boat and to the left of the boat, so probably still a good chance of hooking up here, but if I don't hook up soon, I'll, I'll recast out wider. Even though I've got fish under the boat, it's generally those fish that are well away from the boat they are going to bite. Um, anything's too close to the boat generally is a bit more spooky, a bit harder to catch. Even though I'm in this depth of water, like it's eight meters of water here, um, I definitely believe the further you get your lure away and the, the further the fish are away, the uh, more chance you've got. Definitely for snappers. Other species, not so much of an issue, but definitely for snappers. There's a bite, pretty sure, or something. Oh, yeah. Yep. There we go. Oh, I think I've been busted off. Not sure what happened then. Maybe I've uh, damp. Oh, looks like we've had a knot failure. I oh, know. That's the knot. There's some sort of weirdness going on there. Hmm. Okay. You can get bit off by snappers. They have got very hard teeth. Another jig head and off we go. You would have seen me previously using the uh, watermelon red color and I've gone to the Kalido Star the last couple of times in Moreton Bay. And the reason for that is that the water has gotten a lot cleaner in the last couple of months. And I believe this color is a better color for that cleaner water. It's a little bit more natural. Um, you could probably use the watermelon red, but for me, it's just a confidence thing that this cleaner water this this uh, this lure choice, this color choice, will be a, a better one. Um, so if you're confident in anything, it means you're going to be fishing the lure a lot better than if you're not confident. So I always say to people, uh, you know, use what you're confident with. Um, once you have some success, obviously you build that confidence and and you go from there. But you're not having success, obviously you change around and try different things. But that's my thought process behind it. That's why I go for that more natural color and this cleaner water. All right, let's try not to get bitten off this time. Punch it up out there again. I was definitely getting a few hits, like it was sort of a, there may have been some tailor down there or something perhaps as well. You never know. Usually a snapper doesn't sort of hit it so many times. It's usually just whack it's on. Oh, yep. Oh. I've been bitten off again, I think. There is definitely something down there with, uh, with some teeth because that just bit through it without any pressure on it at all. Super clean bite off. Mm. All right, we'll try it again. All right, hopefully I don't get bit off this time. Must be Taylor or something like that. Pretty deep for Taylor, but you never know. Obviously, it's a heap of bait down there. There's a lot of fish. In this one area, you got, you know, multiple species obviously down there. Jewfish, snapper, you know, probably Taylor. Oh, something on it. We'll keep fishing a bit longer. We may have to go to another spot. Plenty of spots to have a look at today. Oh, nice fish out real wide there. Yeah, some nicer fish coming through sound now. Pretty subtle bite. Oh yeah, another squire. Yeah, 
head knocking. <laughs> this is a ton of fun. What are we, yep, another squat. Oh, another one followed it up. Oh wow, I've never seen that before. Yeah, have a look at this on the scan. You can see a couple of fish coming up with that other one. He's not as big as his first two, I don't think. Wink. He's a 40 though. Oh, he's a nice fish. Number three, not as big. Beautiful coloration on this fish. Very, very dark orange to red. Look at the fish on the center. They're really coming up and having a look after I catch them like that. It's interesting. There's obviously some bait up in here. All right, let's put him on the mesh. Ow. Okay, he's well and truly legal, 39 centimeters. Another one for the live well. Okay. Let's go along again. Wow, this thing casts a long distance. <laughs> I've still got the brakes on a bit. I can loosen up a bit more to get a bit more distance, but with a stiffer line, I want to try and get it loosened up a little bit before I start punching too far, but that's impressive for a quarter ounce for a six foot five rod. When I cast the whole rod, just loads up. Oh, there's a ton of fish on the sound of there now. Wow, between 16 and 24 meters out. It's just loaded with fish. All right, we're on the bottom there now. Running a 33 meter scan today. Oh, I dropped him. <laughs> As it's sinking back down, he grabbed it. It's coming in pretty easy. It's coming up high. What if this is a tailor? Yes, so they were tailor. Yes. I was right. It's a tailor. This is definitely what they bite me off. Big tail, or good sized tailor, you know, not huge, but good sized choppy chops. Nice tailor. Legal size, but I don't much like eating tailor personally. I do have a neighbor that likes them. I'm, I've got no ice. I can keep the, the squire li alive very easily in the live well, but tailor a little bit trickier. All right. This plastic spun on the jig head a little bit here. So, they're very good holding it on, they're very hard to get off, especially in winter with cold hands, I must admit. Trying to get it off so I can re. There we go. Re put it on, there we go. That's better, nice and straight. Okay, let's get away from those tailors. We want snappers. Oh my god, this thing's just casting longer and longer all the time. I don't know how far that is, but it's got to be over 30 meters. That's super impressive for a quarter ounce jig head. There's always the potential to cast further with a bait cast reel than a spin reel because the line's coming off in a straight line. You don't have that coiling effect, you don't have any resistance. Uh, the line just comes straight off. Obviously, that can be difficult because you can get overrun. So can be tricky to manage, but the potential is there. Uh, all the casting championships and all that sort of stuff, record casting distances are usually run on overhead reels rather than spin reels. Because as a spin reel, more line goes out, the spool gets uh, less line on it. It's less full, therefore there's more of a lip and the line starts to catch it and slow it down more and more. Whereas you don't have that issue with the bait caster, if anything, as more line gets, comes out, 
the spool gets lighter because there's less line on it and it will spin more freely. Obviously you've got braking systems and stuff like that to, to adjust that. But anyway, a little technical element there for you. Not that you're probably really that into that, but anyway. Let's go out wide again, eh? Filled with funny at the start because it's a six foot five rod. I'm, I'm fishing everything seven foot plus these days, so it's quite short. But I've really adjusted the way I'm casting, especially this heavier weight. I can really just slow and load up, punch it out. Super light in the hand. This is ridiculously light. You've got no idea. I love to actually get a weight on this thing. I think the reel is going to be like 180 grams or something, and the rod's probably less. You know, it's a super light rod. A lot of guides on it, but um, they're all pretty small. Again, you're not coiling. You got the lines coming in a straight line. I'm not running heavy leader on this rod, so you don't need big guides on it. You know, I think I got ten. Oh yeah, there we go. I got ten on it now, and I think that's definitely a squat. Maxim might go is like twelve. Oh wow, that's a good fish, man. The best ones hit it like that, they just cream it. Oh yeah, this is a good fish. Oh, feel the teeth. Must have it down fairly far down his mouth. Yeah, nice. Another another 40 something. Not big, but geez, he's fought hard for his size. <clears throat> I'll lift him in. Yeah. Another nice fish. Alright, well this is me four bag limit. It's all fun from here on in. Plastic's turned again on the jig head. Usually once it's turned, you've got to pull it off and re-put re it on. You get a few goes at that before it starts to get a bit too loose and you have to um, put another, another plastic on. But the big thing is it holds it on so good, that Daiwa jig head, better than any other brand of jig head. And I'm really finding these hooks are quite good. I, I'm fishing the bigger, the bigger ones and catching dew around the sharks and pulling as hard as I physically can. I haven't bent any hooks as of yet. So, uh, yeah, for me, big thumbs up for those Daiwa jig heads. If I want a stronger hook, I'll definitely go to a Nomad, a BKK jig head. I do like the shape of the TT the best. Uh, I think they've got the best head design. So, for the smaller fish and smaller plastics, nothing wrong with the TTs. I think they're good, the headlocks. For my um, normal type plastics, I run the Head Hunter Extreme 3Os on my uh, Molex little 3.5 RT shads. Yes, that would took that as I was like hop, hop, hopping. This could be another tailor again, I reckon. Oh, that's really sort of, I don't know. It's playing up like a snapper though. It's coming up high, it must be a good tailor. He's gonna jump, whoa. Yeah, it must be a better tailor, this one. Oh, yeah, we go. That's actually a pretty good tailor. Woo. He's gotta be up near 50, this fella. Yeah, good size Taylor. Oh. oh wow, that's a good Taylor. Get the net out for this one.
Oh, nice jump in the net. Lovely big tailor. Wow, that's pretty cool. Let's see how big he is. Yeah, he's a 50. 50 odd. 53 centimeter tailor. All right, make sure I check the leader on this one. All right, pop him back in the water. 53, crack a tailor, especially on that gear. Come on, buddy. Yeah, you're right. Good lad. All right, we're having a fat little session today. Check the leader. Might trim that uh, tag off my uh, off my knot a bit better. Yeah, no, that's fine. No nicks or anything like that. We'll get back out there. Yeah, it's having a great session today. I wasn't sure if I was going to come out. I sort of turned the alarm off this morning. Watch the uh, Queensland Maroons lose very badly last night. And uh, yeah, I didn't sleep particularly well last night. So I was like, I uh, don't think I'll go. And like I said, I've got much, haven't got much time. Noisy, noisy, noisy. All right, plenty of fish on the sand here. I think I'm going to hook up. Just depends on if they're tailor or whether they're snappers. Here we go. All right. I'm thinking Taylor. A lot of fast head shaking going on there. Look at that. We might have something completely different here. I don't know. I'm Taylor might have come up by now, I think. Oh, that's a squire. Yep. All right, as I said, all catch and release from here on in. Humble fish, definitely legal, but um, got my four, so off he goes. Now I could leave and go look for some bigger fish. You know, I've had a good session on these squire. I could go, go further up in the bay and chase a bigger Jew. Like I said, I'm a bit restricted in time, so I don't know. I'll give it another 10 minutes and I'll make a call. <laughs> so the second this goes quiet, I'll probably move on. There's a fish. Another snapper. This is fun. <laughs> I'm really enjoying this. Something a bit different for me. Ultra light, reasonably deep water, no sharks. Not monstrous fish, but good battle for the gear I'm using. Another nice fish. Definitely another legal snappers. Another one to let go. Real school size fish these, up around that 38 centimeters. Plenty of them this time of year. Good time to get out and get a feed of these. Best eating size as well. I mean, 40 odds probably, I think 35 is the legal size. My preference is to go 38 minimum. Um, seems to be a big difference between the fillet you get off a 35 and a 38, in my opinion. Yeah. 
I'm hanging out for my feet. Oh. Pull the hook. Damn. I'm hanging out for my 50. I really want me 50 <laughs> on the BFS. I think that'll be a screaming run. Well, you know you're having a good session when you've got nearly, you know, double figures fish and you're still on the original GoPro batteries. <laughs> it's always a good sign. Oh, Taylor. <laughs> Playing with Taylor. If you wanted to, you could just throw a little metal slug down there and spin it back and catch a whole bunch of Taylor, I reckon, but uh, I'm not very interested in catching that many Taylor, even though there's some good ones in there. Those bigger ones certainly, certainly fight pretty good. But yeah, if you wanted to, it's what you could do. Last little ditched effort here, still plenty of current. Seen plenty of fish on the sounder, might just drift it. I was to keep an eye on the sounder as I'm drifting. Yeah, that's had a good bite, that one. That feels like a big fish. I'm actually gonna chase after this fish. Really good bite. Going against the current with some speed. Definitely got another run left in it. Just a big heavy weight. Could be another Jew fish, I think. The way he bit it is very much like a Jew. Oof, this is a big fish. Yeah. Woo <laughs> hoo! How fun is this? Oh God. It's a stalemate. Oh, the other camera's run out. What do we got here? I think it's a Jewfish, but if it's a snapper, it's a bloody good one. Could be my 50 plus. Oh, I think it's a Jew fish. I'm going with a Jew. What is it? What is it? Yeah, it's a Jewy. Cool. Swallowed it big time. Well, I'd hate to hook a, uh, a 90 or a meter Jew on that outfit because I'd be in trouble, I reckon. That was a bit of a battle. It's not even that big. I'll put him on the measure and see what he goes. Uh, he's not even 70 centimeters. <laughs> and it's an epic, epic battle. I have to perform some surgery to get this lure out because he swallowed it down deep. All right. That was pretty good, came out pretty easy. All right, he's about 70 centimeters, just a smidge under 70. Not a big Jew, but on that tackle, wow, what a fight. See you later, mate. All right, little uh, quarter ounce, just really getting the job done today, this little Cleto Star. Uh, I'm, I usually fish very heavy, as you know, uh, but that's usually because of sharks that sort of thing but now we're in in the cooler months here in winter we don't have the issue of the sharks so i can use a much lighter outfit take my time to bring the fish up less chance of barotrauma if i do that as well and um as you've seen the fish release fine you know don't keep them out of the water for too long and they're good to go all right last casting drift oh there's some good fish Good fish there. Here we go. All right. 
don't know what we got here. Could be good. Not doing a lot, but it's got a lot of weight. There's a lot of fish here. The fish are following this fish in. Head shakes like crazy. I think it's another squire. It could be an okay size one or it could be little. It's really hard to tell. I think it's all right. Wants to go on the boat. Oh, it's another Jew. Cool. Even smaller Jew. Sick. Three Jewies. Little puppy dog Jewy, this one. All right, number three Jew. A proper little tacker, this one. Quickly get the hooks out of him, let him go. Don't do this in summer, people. Only in winter. Off he goes. All right, you gotta be happy with that. Three Jew, six Squire, couple of Taylor, one real nice Taylor. I've got the school of Jews over here again. I might have one more cast. <laughs> I can't help myself. Oh, they're stacked up pretty good there. I've got to have one more shot. Oh, stacked up really good. Really, really good. Good chance of hooking up here. I think they're due again, I'd say. Um, yeah, good little session. Nothing huge, but really good fun on this, this little light rod. Great way to christen it. You know, these are an expensive reel. They're, I think, $6.99 retail. Um, but it's a lifetime reel, you know. I've got a few Conquests now, and uh, I do buy a few of the other cheaper Baycasters as well. And I think for the money, um, these things last really, really well. You know, of all the Conquests I've got, I don't think I've bought a single part to go in one of them. I don't particularly look after them sensationally. I, um, I wash them every time, you know, warm soapy water, give them a good go over with that warm soapy water. Every now and then I'll open them up, put a little bit of oil on the bearings and stuff like that. But, you know, I've never had to drag apart on any of my Conquest reels. Um, so I can't, I can't speak highly enough of them. Well, I said they are very expensive, but um, you get what you pay for with anything. And sometimes it's worthwhile. If you're going to use it a lot and you like it, you know, it's worth going and spending a bit more on something you use a lot um, and you want it to last for a long time. You know, you might buy, you know, a two or $300 bait cast reel or a $250 bait cast reel and they feel like crap after, you know, uh, less than a year of fishing with it. But uh, I can tell you now, a conquest after me using it, almost commercial usage realistically, you know. I'm using it once a week, if not more sometimes. And, um, you know, years of use and, and no issues at all and I still feel great. They are thick. Try that a little bit closer in. I'm moving out towards 24 again now, but anyway, we'll try this length and see how we go. They're so thick there, I just, I've got to get one. Yep. <laughs> oh, you had to get one. <laughs> I don't think it's a big one, I think it's another little one. But there's just so many there. Whoa, what's going on here? Feels really strange, this one. I wonder if I've got a tail, it's coming up towards the surface. Oh no, it's a, <laughs> it's a tiny little Jew. Oh, look how small that is. That's so cute. <laughs> They're getting smaller. <laughs> a 
Now that is a small, small Jew. All right, I'm definitely going now. The Jew are getting very, very small. So, all right, we'll go hit those uh, spots where we might find a bit bigger fish and uh, look for that flathead and see what we can find. got a few small fish around a structure and I think kind of like three big fish right next to it I could be wrong but um, I'm gonna get the slightly heavier rod out well a lot heavier right <laughs> more than slightly uh, and I'm gonna drift back on that and see if I can uh, catch something hopefully one of those bigger fish I'll have a go I did see a few smaller fish as well so I got heap of fish on my right now by the looks of it which is really strange but i've still got these bigger ones lingering at the left here and I... there we go we got one i think yeah it's a big fish it's cruising holy crap this thing's flying oh wow this thing is fast Oh, it's dummy on the bottom. It got me back into the reef. Oh, it got me in. There's a wreck down there, and he's got me in it. Holy crap. Such a fast fish. Didn't really feel like a snapper, though, but... All right, so I got well and truly uh, smashed up by that fish. It obviously knew exactly where to go. I, I don't think it was a snapper. It's sort of... It come up too high and changed direction too quickly. I'm leaning towards perhaps a kingfish um, because yeah, it was so, so fast moving straight towards that structure. Uh, it has me thinking, yeah, it was a kingy, but you never know. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll never know. But um, anyway, we, we hooked one of those fish finally, but um, way too good for me and way too good for that gear. Just pulling the harbour now. What a cracking little session. Unfortunately, I ran out of time to chase a flatty on a glow bait, um, but I think I'll be back in a couple of days. Uh, hit this, hit this again before the video comes out. Hit that spot for those snappers and little jews. I think. What a lovely day in the end. Um, so much for this 50% chance of rain. It's just a glorious day today. Quite warm. So, all right. Um, I'm going to head back to the ramp, head off to work, and I'll catch you next week. Cheers, guys.